the brew talk. And this episode is a little quick how to how to convert any basically party keg into a fermentation vessel. You know it. Last night, something was like kind of a keg. <laughs> a keg. <laughs> Just a general cheapo, very cheap keg. It did have ghost ship inside. But you know what? You got drank. Oops. So, let's look at this piece, shall we? Aluminium. Yes. The top part, where the air inlet valve was, easy, wrangle it out. Power pliers, bare hands, easy peasy. It's got a fully working sprigger. So basically, when you want to rack it off into your secondary, secondary or bottle it, do it straight from the nozzle. Convenient, isn't it? With some help of man's best friend, electrical tape. And the existing top part that I was using the keg. Yeah. Basically enough angling, it's a bung. It comes clean out. Easy peasy. So if you can, huh, what can you do with that? You can make us make a aluminium demijohn. Mm-hmm. An aluminium demijohn. It's not an alternative. K experiment. Would it work? Or would it not work? Would it depart off flavours? Who knows? A question. Will the spigot leak? Let's do some experimental vessels, shall we? This is the keg experiment. Welcome to making spiced winter cider. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to prepare a spiced winter cider. First thing you add is one tea bag. Yeah, tea bags contain tannin. It's usually put in wine, but I put it in cider for flavour and mouthfeel. You can basically use anything you want, but I'm using a metal tankard. Nothing too fancy here, you know? If you want what goes in, it's metal, it can take it, you know? If you want less than half a pint of water in this mix, you want to over dilute it. If you over dilute it, you'll ruin it. Alright. Next, you add molasses. Yeah. If you don't want a lot of molasses, you want a little bit of molasses. Okay? You want less than two teaspoons. Alright? There's enough sugar in the apple juice we're going to be using, so we don't need to add excess. Okay? So basically less than two teaspoons of molasses. It brings flavour, mouthfeel, most of all. This molasses tastes good with anything. I'm a big fan of molasses. Basically you want to mix it all in, so you mix the tannin from the tea bag, plus the tea bag will aid in making a nice smooth flavour for you. Mix in all the molasses, make sure it dissolves everything, okay? Now, you leave that for 15 minutes to cool down. Now, after the 15 minutes has passed, you then add your mixed spice. Hell yeah. Yes, I'm a big fan of spices. I'm a big fan of spices, okay? But we're making a gallon of this stuff. And you don't want the flavour to dominate the apples, okay? The molasses taste very good with apples. You want less than half a teaspoon of mixed spice. Alright? And by this point, the tea bag is stewed nicely. Which basically means the tea bag is basically has a nice dark colour to it. The tea has darkened the lid of the water. Been 15 minutes. So it's stood off nicely. 
Now you want to leave it. Put the cool down gradually. Yeah. If you put if you put hot liquid in with your yeast, it's not going to like it too much. In the use experimental container, e.g., an empty keg, I'll make a tried and tested recipe. It always smells delicious, you know. Lovely. Now, we do the last and final stage. All right, I've got the keg sanitized, that the uh, funnel sanitized, my airlock with the electrocate wrapping. You'll see why in a second. As this is the top, the stopper that was on, the, on top of the keg. Through does a, a regulator, a one-way valve, for basically depressurizing the keg so it squirts out everywhere. Yeah, super simple. But see the size of this hole, the size of this with the electrical tape? Snug, airtight seal. Boom. All right, let's start this up. Producing a spiced cider is really easy. First, you get your juice. And you pour in one litre of juice. You'll we'll see why in a second. The spice in the tea bag mix is still warm. Say warm, it's about half halfway cooled. This will whistle cool as soon as it hits the bottom. There's enough sugar in the apple juice concentrate. To ferment out this turbo cider. Yeah. So this will be a rather classy turbo cider using spices. Get your tankard and you just pour it in. Make sure you don't spill this anywhere because the molasses will attract insects. It's ridiculous. All you got is a tea bag at the bottom. I like spicy brew actually, if I put some hot water and a cup of tea out of it. Yep, you want to proceed as dumping it all in. And yes, if anybody asks, yeast nutrient is already in. I can't be able to spend time putting it on camera because who wants to see me adding yeast nutrient? If that's interesting, it's watching paint dry, you know? As you fill up the keg, <laughs> as this holds five liters, like a normal household demi John, I'm only putting four in. There's no way I have a blow off pipe that would work with this one, it's only provides like a big bitch or like a chunky pipe or something. So I'm not going to push it, I'm only putting four liters in. Apple juice. Now the liquid is going to cool, it's been cooled rapidly now by this, this warm room temperature juice going in. Room temperature juice will rapidly cool it down. Lovely. Not the most exciting bit, but you know, pouring juice, <laughs> turbo cider. Get a mass. This is a basic introduction to making cider as well. You don't need to add the spices or the tea bag or even the molasses. But you know, you just do it straight up, pour in the apple juice, throw in your yeast. That'll make turbo cider. You don't even, you don't even need yeast nutrient. But then again, it's up to you really, because you don't want to leave, leave to leave it to wait a while for it to ferment out. Right, that's four layers of juice, spice mix has gone in, and it's nearly three inches on the top. So that's pretty safe. Now, we add the yeast now. 
and the yeast I'm going to use is super compound. But as when as we're only making cider, not wine, less than half a teaspoon. You don't need a lot of yeast to make cider. It's bloody easy. Less than half a teaspoon. That's all you'll need. In it goes. Done. Now here's the tricky bit. Putting the stopper back in. We're going to push. In it goes. And we're going to push again. We have a one. So look, it's not leaking from the sprigger. The regular tap where, where you pour drink out of. It's not leaking out the top. Yeah. We have created a aluminium five litre demijohn. It's been a quick fit for me. There'll be an update if this actually works. Now, Let's talk about the potential gains from using a keg as a demijohn. One, it's not see-through, it's not clear. So the sun, the UV rays, can't hurt the cider. So in theory, you could put this in the sunlight and the sun won't make it go skunky or taste like crap. If it's worth a try, I might do that. Let's see how it ferments out the first time first. And the fact that it's aluminium, it's got a sprig on it. If you drop it, you ain't gonna crack, you ain't gonna smash it. You're not gonna make a mess all over your floor. Hmm, curious, yes? Probably if you've got a smaller airlock, it'll probably fit my feet under the handle. But I has the big fat boy airlocks. So yeah. All you do now is pour in water or sanitizer, and this is complete. Here we go. Now I've now put sanitized water in there. Yeah. It will equalize out eventually, give it a chance. And when this starts to ferment, the CO2 byproducts then come out of this way through here and come up here and it's going to bubble. Yeah, it's going to start blopping. Yeah, bubbles are going to start rising, oxygen can't get in. And this is sanitized liquid. It contains sterilizer. But, another option you can use if it's, in, if it's cheap in your area is vodka. Yeah, when I have my big, big 25 litre of that guy, I use vodka. But then again, you can make some wash, which is basically two kilos of sugar, <laughs> turbo yeast, but don't drink it, okay? Use it in airlocks. It's super cheaper, it's cheaper than vodka. If it's cheaper in area, just use cheap vodka. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. You're getting more crazy ideas. Let me know, because I'll be curious to have a go. This is the K experiment. Yeah. Let's see if this works. I'll keep you guys posted.